welcome to vlog 19 of the Pokemon Spectrum. Woo! Not much oh. happened. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty boring all around. I don't know. Showed up, had some tea, then they left. <laughs> yeah. You were... Nice place you got here. <laughs> got some new toys. You guys, man. You guys got a base. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, they do have have cool <laughs> well, to be fair, they didn't get the base until after their campaign was over. So. True. <laughs> so yes. we'll get the rocket base when our season ends. Exactly. Okay. Our epilogue will have tidied that place up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was actually uh, this happen. <laughs> that, that was actually Kimberly's idea. Like we were all talking after the campaign was over, and I think it was during the time we were writing our epilogues. And it was like we're all splitting off into different countries and doing different things. We need something together. So it's like <gasps> let's make a bar, and they just got bigger, and it was like a resort. No, like a place where we all stay, and it just like grew. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> oh, cool. Mm. And and because of even though you guys do a lot of work traveling there's this nexus there's this nexus that you can easily get to relatively yeah. easily can get with to. magical mirrors right yeah. so it's not like yeah. you're apart you know so yeah. it's really it's, it's it's really cool how that worked i thought it was a great idea a beautiful idea so i love it i love it and it was a great place to actually have your session at because i thought you the, the dragon age characters would probably would love to see what the base was like and you know, it's just there's a lot of resources there, like the gift shop and yeah. <laughs> the bar and the beach. There's just a lot of different places that I thought you could role play at the chapel of or the temple of Andraste and things of that nature. Yeah, yeah it was great. It was great to get to know the area. And um, there, there's just so many little callbacks like Pains and um, and Halicere's statue and the temple. I, I love yeah. it. I was I was happy to get some Halicere stuff in there, too, mm -hmm. since she's mm -hmm. one of the main PCs. Um, I was going to put in more of some of the other side characters. I was going to put in a little bit more of Malcolm. You saw a little bit of Malcolm. I was going to have Hugh show up at some point too, but I didn't want to disrupt what was going on. I thought there was a lot of role playing going on, and I didn't want to take away from the role playing that was already going. But you might see Hugh in season three, so we'll see. Um, Hugh knows. Oh, <laughs> oh. That was good. Do not encourage them. Well, speaking of Riz, I wanted to ask Riz, how how do you think it went considering how you had no knowledge of Dragon Age or the oh, campaign I, in general? I just learned as Cassie learned. If I learned stuff that was flawed, I don't know it, you know? <laughs> so it felt fine. I did not get any of the references to, you know, the gods or to like the previous PCs or anything. Um, or to Vinter. <laughs> Don't listen to it. <laughs> but I thought, I mean, I don't know. Did anyone think I did egregiously? No, you did fine. Oh, no, oh, no. no. Oh, the worst. Oh, the worst. <laughs> I, I still think you should play it though. Like, it's a great series. Yeah, I, I actually, I think I own three of them. Mm -hmm. um, just have them. Start with Origins. Yeah. yeah. Start with Origins. And I'm curious what you think of Origins, so. Yes. I still might stream it at one point. That might be my blind playthrough oh. of it. Yeah, so we'll yeah. see. Do that. Um, how did you guys like it meeting us and stuff? <laughs> okay, I, I wish, wish we, we would have had time. less fights. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. Our team, they're always fighting. So I, uh, when we uh, entered new people in, they were also always going to be fighting. In Cedric's there, you guys teleported in. It was going to be a combat. No, I think the fighting <laughs> was necessary at some point. Yeah. Yeah. It, it pretty much every single every single crossover. There seems to be some sort of altercation. There definitely was an altercation between Maximilian and the Mass Effect characters. There was a bit between the Mass Effect characters and your characters. And um, Please. Please. I don't plan for it. I don't plan for it, but it naturally seems to happen. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like all in all, you know, we each consider, or our characters, you know, consider themselves to be like good people and everything, and they have good intentions, um, but they all have very good reasons to be guarded, um, yeah. you know, good reasons to feel threatened, um, and sure. especially when, yeah, so we just crashed their place all of a sudden, and on our end, we totally had fight or flight from being chased by a dragon god. 
So, like, tensions... Try charm diplomacy. Try. I'm just saying the tensions were understandably very high. <laughs> exactly. So I am glad, though, that we got, like, that fighting out of the way at the beginning. Yeah. I'm glad no one died. <laughs> yeah, <true. laughs> yeah. But then I feel, I feel that since we did get that out of the way, everyone got to open up a lot more easily than they otherwise would have. Mm-hmm. I almost feel like if we hadn't had some sort of eruption, it just kind of would have, the tension just would have simmered the entire time. Yeah. yeah. Or at least That's there would have been a bigger risk of that. So I like how it worked out. <laughs> Even if I caused it. <laughs> yeah, bullet. <laughs> Another thing I noticed during all of the crossovers, not just this one, is um, what I love about the crossovers is there always seems to be some sort of mentorship that happens between the legacy characters and the current characters. Because I remember when the Dragon Age characters ended up in the Mass Effect world, you guys were being mentored by the Mass Effect people because of their experience after, because they, they saved the galaxy. And with that experience and wisdom in their shoulders, they were able to somehow relate to what you guys were going through trying to save Thetis. And I thought they were able to instill some wisdom towards them. Now you guys are doing the exact same thing, it seems, with this group. Um, and hopefully, when <clears throat> Mass Effect ends up in the Pokemon's door doorstop, maybe, for those of you who are still alive, you'd be able to give them some wisdom. <laughs> you think I joke when I say that, but... Uh... <laughs> I, I don't know what experience says. Yep, I have to ask something that was bothering me the entire session. Where is my child? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she she died. To Noir about being a parent. And I was like, hang on a minute. If Violetta's out and I'm here, where's my child? <laughs> you sent her off to college, remember? <laughs> no, that was, that's the end. She's at school. school. Oh, she's okay. at school. Gotcha. All right. I mean, it's the middle of the day. I think she's still at school. Okay. Okay, I, then. I, I kept forgetting to ask. <laughs> Good question, though. <laughs> yeah. How much? How much? How much time is? How much time has passed since we've been in Thetis? Like we're yeah, not gonna, that's our other. I think it'll be revealed next time. <laughs> we're not gonna go back, and our whole month is gone, right? <laughs> hey, I get all the time to craft, then. Yes. The world's probably destroyed, but... Good rule of thumb is that the time time passes in Thetis the same as time passes in Pokemon World. Perfect. So, oh, so you're there less than a day. Oh. It's easier for me that way, which is why I actually have a timeline. I have, I have notes that shows a timeline of all three worlds right now and Ooh. how they line up. Simple. Um, so I can tell this many years passes for Dragon Age, and this many years passes for Mass Effect, which means this many years for Pokemon. And when, when I do the Harry Potter campaign, it's going to be the exact same thing. So time passes in relative to the same okay. amount. Although, um, just like we were like left um, Pokemon in the middle of the night. Yeah. Or like late evening, like eight or nine or something. You did. It was middle of the day here. So is it like different time yeah, zones? Yeah, time zones. I mean... <laughs> Thetis is actually round. Yeah, it passes the same way. But... Yes. So is it like yeah. still the same day? <laughs> you guys have been here for approximately oh, 12 hours, maybe? So I think 12 hours will have passed in the real world. And the reason why it's lunchtime for them the and nighttime world. for you... Yes. Eat it. The reason why it's <laughs> lunchtime, lunchtime for them and nighttime for you guys is because of time zones. Nice. Good question, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious what, so, like, this is kind of a question to all the current main PCs. Like, what do you think your character took away from today's session? Um, roots, notes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, I meant emotionally or personality-wise, oh, but you know no. what do. Like... <laughs> a new friend in Andrea. Fortunately, they do not have more time to do girly stuff. <clears throat> I have to get back. I have to do this again. Make and double. It'll be great. Yeah, I would. I would say that Molly definitely got some. Uh, like she, she's one thing that she's been worried about is actually uh, protecting, trying to protect the the people that she cares about. 
and uh, Bullet not being as cheerful after that uh, after that vision certainly um, was hard for her to see because he's always cheerful, and she she's a she's afraid that she was afraid that you know she couldn't she couldn't protect him, and now she's worried about protecting Alicia and she's worried about rescuing the Rays. So it's like I think she was able to get some try to get some uh, reassurance from Kenna and also uh, tried to reassure Bullet as well. So I was happy with the way that scene went. I was really happy with it. Yeah, no, Kenna was a good mentor. Now Bullet knows that if he doesn't want to die, they just don't die. And, um, <laughs> That's and so, so it'll all be chill in the end. Works every time. Yeah. <laughs> Getting a little bit closer to thinking like Chase. There you Visualize. go. And execute. <laughs> no, and uh, aside from obviously, yeah, the physical stuff, Cassie, um, her universe has expanded upon this. It's not infinite like Chase's yet, but um, you know, just uh, like even as simple as the inclusion of the different races, you know, the dwarves and the horned woman, <laughs> horned woman, yes, whatever they're no. called. Tonight. That, yes, <laughs> you know them. Uh, to, to stuff about airships. Yeah, the airships yeah. and the bait and the lyrium and, um, and the magic, just magic in general and all that stuff. There's a, there's a lot for her to think about and she has some stuff you can you know, look over note wise or uh, research further physically. Um, so yeah, she's definitely going to be busy. Yeah, and I would say for. Mm. <laughs> it would be so cool. Like, pals. Yeah, I'm sure exactly. someone can figure that out. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, if if one day Cassie makes it back to that dimension, she'll be able to find you as long as you hang on to that Pokeball. Aww. So. Oh, awesome! Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, what's what are you gonna? So, so in case you're wondering, yes, you can release Esbjorn from said Pokeball. Oh. Um, <laughs> Wait, that doesn't make me. That doesn't make me his master now, does it? I mean, technically, yep. I threw the ball. I'm pretty sure I am as Bjorn's master. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but it might be useful if you're trying to sneak your way around and you don't want, you know, this big giant bear to <laughs> to uh, break your cover. Why would you cover, not so. want a big giant bear? <laughs> has taught him plenty of stealth by now. So much stealth. Exactly. Stealthy is there ever. I expect in season three to see to see Kenna, you know, take out the Pokeball and say, Esbjorn, I choose you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's That'd be amazing. <laughs> or or it's actually it's actually the Obins. Fine. That's the Obin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'll it'll force them to grow closer together. Or... <laughs> it, it won't. <laughs> right. Uh, Ken and Theo have always had that, like, they love each other, but they also give each other a hard time. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just their relationship. <laughs> the, yeah, the other PCs? Because I want to hear what the NPCs took from it, too, honestly. But I don't think we got through the PCs yet. <laughs> I think with Chase, uh, he, he... Well, oh, sorry, not NPCs. Ahead. I mean, you guys. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Everybody else are NPCs to us. Yeah. Well, they're non-playable <laughs> to me. <laughs> Neither is Noir and Molly and Chase and <laughs> Tiffany. Hush, we are one. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think with Chase, it was, uh, it was to have uh, an idea behind the perspective that he has a perspective of infinity. That's sort of the thing that's been driving him. He doesn't think that the Pokemon place is the only place because he knows or he's read that there are Pokemon that are beyond the place. Uh, he's now experienced it. He knows there's the Ultra Beasts. He's read about them. And uh, and now he's dimension traveled. And Hoopa was a thing that he got from Noir. And so he's only gotten confirmations about all the crazy thoughts he thought he had. They're, they're all of a sudden not so crazy. Like that's why when he says... I feel like I'm the sanest one there is. Like he believes what he's saying because everyone else is almost closing their eyes to it. Um, and I think you got to be a little bit crazy to understand that 
there that there's there's no boundaries here like in infinity is uh is boundless and um having seen that part of the fade um and just being able to experience that there there were other dream worlds and that there's there's like he was inside infinity as far as he's concerned like he's he's met the thing that he's been trying to search for he was a part of it um and i think that is probably that's going to have a great effect on him going forward i think yeah <clears throat> Ella, were you going to say something? I was just um, going to say, reflecting on what happened with Noir and like what she took from the session, like the mentoring thing. Um, yeah, more indecision. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Because she really wants to help Molly, but Fabian at the same time, it's like, and then Garatina's also there, so it's like three little things, and it's like, which direction? <laughs> yeah, I was I was sort of hoping yeah, that... Sorry. I was sort of hoping that the issue of bringing people back from the dead would be breached, because that was definitely something that this group in particular wrestled with in their campaign. I think we touched it lightly, but didn't get into it very deeply. But that was one thing that I thought would have been really interesting. Um, I also wanted to mention that I... I did think about the possible big reveal for Chase that he actually has a star on his on his body, but that would not have made sense in a number of things. That would have been inconsistent because in order for that to work, him and because the, the scar is the star is on the soul, mm -hmm. and we know that Halasair's soul was with you guys a year ago. Well, Chase has been around in the Pokemon world this entire time, okay. so it's it's not like it's not like the the mark moves to another person. It's the same soul. It's that soul that gets so so that Halasair's marked soul is, or what you would refer to as Halasair's soul, is still somewhere, and I'm sure it'll appear at some point. Not just yet, though. But it, good, it was good, nice good though that there was some. It was nice that there was some reference to Halasair there. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know if Rachel, you're watching, but if you are, just in case, we miss you. Yeah, we do. We miss you. I'm Much so love. sorry. I wanted to play with you. <laughs> yeah, I, wanted, I was hoping to play with Rachel also. Me too. <laughs> yeah, Rachel's a great player. I definitely miss playing with her as well. So. And uh, can I can I just say? Uh, Kimberly, I thought I thought your scene with uh, with uh, Chase and and Andrea in the fade was great. <laughs> so because, good. Because yeah. for me personally, I feel like Chase is the most difficult one to role play with, just because he's he's uh, for me <laughs> anyway. He's the hardest one to read. He's really broody, and uh, Andrea is pretty used to dealing with that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> really? She's had. A few years of experience with Broody. <laughs> no idea from him. <laughs> no, he's so sunshiny and positive. <laughs> experience with Broody, though. I'll have but to talk to Theo Brody. about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I've always been such a broodster. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. I thought it was actually pretty easy to RP with with Chase. So he's mm. he was all grumpy, and I feel well with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she just kind of stifled a sigh and brought up her mental script. Cedric, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> this worked on Cedric, so I'll use it on oh, this. <laughs> her time yeah, at I, call center. <laughs> but I, I also found, like, I, I was uh, surprised uh, that it ended up being. You know, uh, I like I thought it was going to be maybe like I didn't know who I was going to talk to or how these things are going to come up. I definitely didn't think it would be Kimberly. Um, although when it started, when the scene started, I was like, you know, she had the gladiator thing. So I was, so I was like all the triggers were happening in my head. And I was like, well, I can bring up the whole acting thing. Um, and then that just sort of led to her using keywords that I was like, Jesus Christ, are you watching our show? Because you're literally <laughs> saying so. that I said, like, oops, sorry, uh, nug, nugget. Um, you're saying stuff. <laughs> that I've been saying like almost word for word. Right. So I, that was throwing me off as a player, but I was like, well, now I'm going to, I'm going to write this now because, uh, I feel like 
see where it goes, right? So yeah, I I think you you piggybacked off a lot. I do say a lot of cryptic things intentionally um, as a player, and I think that's what uh, Roma is kind of getting into. I tend to have two storylines. I'll just explain like a little bit on a met on a meta level. I tend to have two ideas going on when I'm doing the outward RP. I'm actually moving something on the sub level. Um, and I'm trying to get the triggers to happen so that I can piggyback them later on because Chase is after, he's always been after something behind the act. Um, but with Kimberly, I think as a player, you you literally like keyed into a lot of that stuff and 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 kind of pushed me down that path a lot faster than I, than I presumed. Yeah. Well, that's really good. I actually haven't been because I wanted to go into this blind and I like to binge watch it at the end. So I've been holding back on watching. Um, I watched you guys as... Uh, I think session one, Audition. and that was it. And I just stopped because I didn't want to see anything else because I knew I was going to be RPing with you guys. So, it, so <laughs> yeah. it was really cool though. Uh, and it, I'm glad that you know you had someone because it sounds like you're having, I don't know for sure, but it sounds like you're having trouble. Like your character is having trouble like voicing his issues with his group, mm -hmm. um, and uh, sometimes. I think talking to a stranger is usually the best way to deal with that. And then from there, you can just, I don't know, hopefully he got a breakthrough and he can oh, yes. kind of start trusting yeah, and I, his thing. Yeah, and I don't even, my comment wasn't even about the other are like role players. I'm saying their characters aren't very susceptible to anything Chase has to say on that level. Like he needed someone like uh, her who understood that magical, like she had that perspective. And he he just sensed that, and so that was a good that was a good opportunity for him to get a lot of development done. So thank you for yeah, allowing that. The development between the two of you reminds me sort of of the development that happened between Cedric's character mm -hmm. and Sink's character mm -hmm. during the crossover. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Well, Andrea was feeling kind of maternal, so. <laughs> Stop cutting yourself. <laughs> yeah. Stop cutting yourself. Yeah. What a good matriarch. Yeah. Now, now this... if you tell him stop cutting yourself, and he ignores her. I'm, I'm glad that cutting themselves didn't actually get the chance to take oh. have taken part in the combat. Yeah. That would have been a yeah. show tell. That would have been Love so me. bad. I, I'm pretty I... sure you wouldn't have lived, to be honest. <laughs> I think I we all would hard to kill. <laughs> I, I was like, I was, I was saying to I think Kimberly or like someone, I was like, if if the cutting thing happened, I don't I don't Jesus. care if you rolled like all the charms in the world, like that rage would have just never come down, and he, <laughs> someone would have had to kill him because it would have just not. Oh, I don't know about that. Tiffy has some pretty high charms. <laughs> nope. Blood <laughs> mages killed know. his mother. She Blood has mages killed his mother. Charms. Yeah. <laughs> I resist it, math. It's like my, I, that's my I, shit. I, I, I have to say, and, and this isn't like any disrespect to like um, Tiffany's character or or like any anything, but um, I feel like charms can only work so far in next to like role playing because like I, like Kevin's saying, I don't think any amount of charm could undo the fact that Blood Mage killed his family so like once it got into the social aspect of like role playing like um it was it was interesting because we didn't really have a lot of that in our um campaign and so for me like the the charming thing it meant I had to like alter my character and stuff um according to like charms being put on and um uh, essentially it's like I got really disappointed with my like intimidate because I was like I, I'd written the thing with uh with the open and and then I got a low intimidate and I, I feel like social role playing is very interesting when you kind of try to mix those elements and I think you have to try to keep it within reasonable belief um as well so I think that was kind of a fun think... thing to play with in every tabletop system I've experienced, yeah, the the social aspects are always really difficult, um, because yeah, you can you can say something like really powerful, and then if you get oh natural one, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, then just, and then it means almost it knows nothing about crit fails. Yeah, it's, it's a about, by the way, 
it depends on the GM and the role players, of course. But yeah. um, I've I've had my share of disappointments with that, so I feel you. Yeah. The opposite also happens if if you have a player who just who isn't as naturally charismatic, mm -hmm. um, and they're trying to play, for example, a bard. You know, they they do the best that they can to role play something charismatic, but then they because they're a bard, they tend to roll really high. So welcome to my life. Because their character would be persuasive in real life, too. So, mm -hmm. no, totally understand it. Totally get it. Yeah. <laughs> or imagine someone like Molly having a high intimidate role or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. When she pulled out that sword, I, I was like, she's so cute. Let's, let's not kill her. <laughs> she, was, she, was protecting, she was protecting her baby. Yeah, like Molly, was... Molly never would have Molly never would have rushed into the fight like that. But as soon as as soon as he attacked Bullet, that was it. <laughs> she... <laughs> like I, I don't blame her for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> if the roles Bullet. were reversed, it would have Cedric would have done the same thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, he he doesn't fault you for for like charging in there. Like, <laughs> it's just how things happened. Mm. Mm -hmm. yep. That doesn't mean he wouldn't defend himself, but <laughs> he still right. respects you for doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but and I loved, I loved the for the for the ones who haven't been watching the campaign yet, or even the for the episodes that haven't dropped yet. I loved, I love dropping things like, oh, Molly is accidentally married. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have fun finding out how that happened. Yeah, yeah she yeah. got accidentally married. Yes. Yeah, well, we have the same with um, with David when he came into um, in Resurgence. And, you know, like, I remember Cedric and Andrea were, like, having a conversation, like, okay, I'm going to hide this, like, artifact with you, and you can keep this as well. And David was just like, do you have all the evil items? Have my sword of doom with me. <laughs> uh. Now she has a cute nug as a wedding present. Yay. Yay. You, you take care of that nug, Theo's orders. Of course. <laughs> oh. Take me and Cassie kill it a day later. It wouldn't stop squeaking. Oh, no. <laughs> it was broken. I wonder what egg group a nug falls under. Oh, Cassie could figure it out. Take it to a daycare <laughs> center. I meant to <laughs> Anything with you a know, ditto. Jefferson. <laughs> True. Just saying, it's the best breeders in the world. True. True. You can make more with a ditto, right? Oh yeah. yeah. There we go. Oh yeah. That's true. <clears throat> it's an invasive species now. Congratulations. The ecosystem gets completely, completely obliterated with the introduction <laughs> of this new species. <laughs> It has no natural predators. <laughs> they just keep multiplying. <laughs> so with the with the lyrium, I was thinking that potions would be all Cassie might need for like, you know, analyzing the properties, which is what they established. But when you specifically said that they were like evolutionary stones, I was like, oh, is he trying to tell me he wants me to take raw lyrium? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying so. I, that there's, so I, had you have to the go, I had to go have Cassie ask about it, um, and I figured yeah. that if you wanted it, you'd make it happen from there. Um, so if you did want her to take some, it's your fault. Um, <laughs> no, uh, no. Just, just it made sense. No, like uh, Dragon Age system. Yeah. It's highly no, I I knew that I knew that it was super dangerous. You die. <laughs> like if you stop taking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it, it, it was even more nerve-wracking for Theo the idea because there's no dwarf as far as he knows there's no dwarves in your world so um and they are the only race in Thedas that can handle Lyrium safely so no, yeah once once they have been said that like dwarves needed to regularly maintain even the containments um mm -hmm. like yeah the argument was basically over like oh well, all right <laughs> yeah I guess it's not. kind of what your mining you system is based on yeah. But, but yeah, no, so she's established that the potions are all that's needed, so so it worked out. Molly has some. So. Exactly. Molly has some potions. Yep. Cassie confirmed that. 
One of the biggest things I was looking forward to most about this session was to tie up a major loose end with Andrea's character. Bostwick! Because you were looking, you were figuring out what happened to Bostwick's character, and... Um, <laughs> we found him. You found him. Forever! I, I even hired the MT Van Crows to look for him! <laughs> and there was mysteriously no trace of him or his servants. Mysteriously. Are they like assassins? Yeah. So... Yeah. So there's still yeah. elves then that didn't come back running around in our world. Mm. Yes. Well, they could end up going back to Andrea and be like, hey, we found him. Andrea's like, yeah, wait, wait, yeah, we did that. Thanks. <laughs> so we'll have to find out what Boswick ends up doing with his life in season three. Yeah. So. yeah. Nice. <laughs> What do you, what do your characters think about the state of the world and the universe at large and all that now that you know about the existence of us, you know? Well, we already knew of the existence of others with the Mass Effect people. Mm -hmm. And I chose to uh, accept denial. <laughs> we never did that. We never met them. That happened. That happened. <laughs> if I say chase in the fade, though, I'll, I'll chill with it. Is pretty cool. <laughs> cool. Actually, actually, I am curious. I am curious. If we had fallen asleep in Thetis, would we have ended up in the Fade or the Dream World? I fade. also wanted to know. You would end up in the Fade. So we wouldn't have. We wouldn't Aww. have closed the door. There would not have been any doors for you to close. Uh, what if we manipulate? Just brought up a door. <laughs> you can probably manipulate and bring up a door, but you know, I don't think it would. Oh, no infinite god gifts. Oh, desire demon! <laughs> Could they have... Yeah. The legendary gods don't exist on this planet. Could they have just, like, mm. imagined their dream world and then manipulate the Fae to look like their dream world and then open up a door and then go into their own universe, but they're still in the Fae? It just looks like their world. <laughs> uh, the ma the Possibly. The mages can manipulate the Fae. Yeah, possibly. It's probably that good that never happened because then Chase would have all sorts of Inception stuff when we go to the dream world. Like, is this really ours? That was literally a thought that crossed my mind before the session. I'm like, how are we going to get out of there? And I was like, well, if Chase, Chase could just think about the doors, like, like I'm sure you could manifest something that was like a door, and then and then maybe that gets us back to our dream world, and then our bodies end up back. At the there. very least, a window. But it would probably go yes. wrong knowing Chase, and then it would mean something else, and then they go, he'd get derailed, but. Just be trapped and made forever. Sorry. Right. <laughs> like there are worse fates. That's how Chase like died. You can see it. Told you I can't die. <laughs> <laughs> also glad we didn't get the fade too long because I'm pretty sure if, if we spent the night there, like one of us would end up being like seduced by a demon. It's like, I can give you fade. I mean, we know that would have been Molly. <laughs> Molly was getting seduced by everyone without them trying. That's true. Hey, the bikini and the tall woman, you know. <laughs> Those horns, man. Them horns. Those horns. Yes. <laughs> nah, she's she nah, she loves Alicia. Oh. <laughs> oh. Sorry, Molly. Were we both unwed? Then it could. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> cross campaign cross campaign ship <laughs> that yeah because that never happens long no, that does not happen <laughs> very long distance no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they got those mirror thingies you'll be fine <laughs> I, I, no, I did not get freaky with some biotic chick <laughs> Biotic alien chick. That's a thing. What what happens if like they took an alluvian mirror with them and then put it in their thing? Like would we Ah, just... that's interesting. Would the whole world just kind of like exploded and killed everyone? <laughs> if so to answer your question, I have an answer to that question. If they somehow brought an alluvian back with them and were able to somehow move the alluvian into the dream world, then yes, you would basically create a doorway between universes that way, at least between the fate and the dream world. Now, the trough part is 
the tough part is though, even if you were to go into the dream world, if somebody from Thetis goes into the dream world in Pokemon, that doesn't necessarily mean they can go into the material plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is why Madame Vu can't physically go into the material plane. She can only she stays within the realm of the dream zone because she can't travel that. So that is the answer to that question. <laughs> yeah. Me slash Cedric was thinking about that, and I was like, "Would he do say something?" No, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> He'd be like, "Go, go, leave." <laughs> Before you cause more problems. Yeah, please. I miss us. I want no, to go back. No. I want to go back to my denial. <laughs> oh, come on! You don't want to help us fight a death god. Come on. Uh, you know, we paid our dues, man. We paid them. <laughs> yes, they had done that. <laughs> I, I mean, I at least think all the characters thought they were decent. <laughs> oh, very decent. They, they weren't bad people. Good times. 